So Maxwell's equations predict or show that you can have traveling electromagnetic waves that travel at a speed that's equal to the speed of light. The speed of light had been measured independently um, at the time. It was known to be about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And light was also known to have wave-like properties. So other waves like sound waves, water waves, exhibit phenomena such as diffraction, interference, and light exhibits the same phenomena. So the conclusion then is that Maxwell's equations predicted the speed of light. So again, um, the speed of light, the variable c, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, that can be predicted in terms of other known physical constants, mu naught and epsilon naught. So this was an amazing, uh, amazing result, helped settle the question of what light is, but um, it also led to all sorts of other questions. So Maxwell's equations predicts the speed of light, but a speed of light relative to what? Right? We always have to measure velocities ref relative to a reference frame. What's the reference frame we should use to measure the speed of light? Another way of sort of thinking about this is what medium would carry a light wave? So let me say what I mean by this. So a water wave, those are disturbances in water. And so we would say that the water propagates the wave. The water, uh, a water wave is a disturbance in water. Sound waves are propagated by molecules in, an, in, in the air. It's a compression wave. Um, molecules in the air get compressed and then elongated. And that pattern is sound, which we uh, would then interpret. So what is the medium, what is the stuff that carries light waves? And this is weird, and moreover, um, light comes through essentially empty space to us, right? The sun comes through outer space, and then um, that light reaches us. What is it traveling through? So the answer to that question that physicists had in the 1800s was to say that light is propagated through the ether. So the ether is some unseen and undetectable medium that um, is, is responsible for carrying light waves. It sounds both a little naive and a little spooky now, that the idea that there's some ether permeating everything, but we can't detect it, but it's the thing that makes light waves go. But that was what was generally believed in the 1800s, so um, light travels at the speed of light relative to the ether, this um, clear, odorless substance that permeates the universe that lets light waves travel. But as we'll see, the existence of the ether um, doesn't really, well, maybe it solves one problem, but it leads to some other even deeper problems. Let's use an example to help us think through this ether business a little bit more. So here's the scenario. Anastasia shoots a laser beam to the right. And a, a laser beam is a beam of light, so it travels at the speed of light. Beowulf, as is often the case, is on a train moving at speed beta, also to the right. And we want to know, what does Beowulf observe for the speed of the laser beam? All right. You might notice, by the way, that this is similar to an example that we did back in Unit 1. So we can approach it the same way. So here's our Galilean velocity transformation equation. And let's draw a picture. All right, so here's Anastasia on the ground. And... Here's a laser beam, I guess in orange. I kind of felt like a laser beam should be yellow, but yellow doesn't really show up. And uh, the laser beam is going to travel at the speed of light, and we use the letter C to stand for the speed of light. All right. So here's Beowulf on his train. And Beowulf 
the train is traveling at a speed of beta. Alright, so we've done problems like this before. Let's see how this is going to work. So V, that's going to be C. Alright, so V prime, that's the speed of the laser beam as observed by Beowulf. V is the speed of the laser beam as observed by Anastasia on the ground. And then we're going to do this. All right, so the picture here is that Anastasia on the ground is at rest with respect to the ether. So the so ether, which is the um, invisible medium through which this light wave travels, through which this laser beam travels, um, is at rest with respect to Anastasia. So Beowulf over here is moving um, a speed beta with respect to Anastasia and with respect to the ether. So what this means is, is that Beowulf will observe a speed of light that's equal to C minus beta. He'll observe a speed of light that's different than the speed of light that Anastasia ob observes, which is C. So this example seems innocent and straightforward, but it actually leads to a big puzzle. Here's the situation. So what we just saw was that Anastasia on the ground, with respect to the ether, observed light to travel at speed C, light speed. Beowulf observes a different light speed uh, because Beowulf is moving at a speed beta. The Galilean transformation equations tell us that Beowulf observes light speed to be C minus beta. All right, so that seems fine. What could be wrong with that? Well, let's go back to the principle of relativity. Remember that that says that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. And we just learned about a new law of physics, Maxwell's equations. So Maxwell's equations are a law of physics, just like the conservation of energy, conservation of momentum, Newton's laws, and so on. So these are laws of physics. And these laws say that light travels at speed c. Doesn't say, the equations don't say anything about ether reference frames, light travels at a speed c. Light travels at the speed of light. So that's what this law of physics says, but that's not what happens here. Um, Beowulf is observing light that's tra not traveling at speed c. So this is a puzzle. One of these statements has to be wrong. Either this statement of relativity is wrong, or something is wrong with how we figured this out. So um, this, this tension, this collision, is what's going to lead us to Einstein's formulation of relativity.